Chapter 42. Reva, they are closing the factory for Christmas holiday. Helen, the camp elder, says, sitting down on my bunk heavily. The guards will be bored, so the commandant wants us to put on a show. We must give them some amusement, or they will find their amusement in the whip. She turns to the doctor, who is bathing my hand in a small basin. Can Reva leave the sick room? Can she come and read some of our poems? I don't know. Reva is still weak. I'm afraid the commandant may have her sent back to the factory if he sees her out of bed. She hesitates for a moment. Well, she has already told me that I am keeping Reva here much too long, but I don't know if we should take the chance. My eyes wander from one to the other. The doctor is trying to protect me, the camp elder trying to do what is best for all. I feel torn. I want to stay here in safety as long as possible. Still, if I can help calm the beast for a while, I must. I will be strong, doctor. I will be part of the show. We must do the best we can, you always say. She smiles. The girls will be happy to see you. Helen puts her hand on my shoulder. Thank you, Reva. She leaves to search for more talent for the command performance. The day arrives. My heart pounds as I walk into the barrack reserved for the show. The doctor holds her arm around me to help me walk. Four hundred voices cheer. I won a battle for life. They were all part of my struggle. They prayed for me. I won. They won. The commandant en enters, followed by her guards. She looks around, her eyes angry, as always, then motions to the camp elder to take over. We are ordered to sit. Helen stands on the platform built for this occasion and begins the program by wishing the commandant and her gang a Merry Christmas. Then one by one, the girls walk up to the platform to show off their talent in ballet, poetry, song. I sit enchanted. So much talent is still alive in those dried out young bodies. They dance and sing for their captors, but it seems to me that they are at this moment in a world of their own, a world of beauty. I glance quickly at the commandant and the guards. They look amazed. Carola steps on the platform. My heart pounds. I know the poem she's going to recite. Red given back. The poem tells a regime that brings slavery and misery to a people and a new regime that pays back the oppressor with the same misery it caused. Carola recites the poem in Yiddish. Yiddish sounds a lot like German. If the Nazis should understand the message, a chill goes through my body as I listen to Carola finish in a strong, determined voice. The commandant bends over to the guard at her side. They whisper. The commandant shrugs her shoulders. I take a deep breath. They ignore the message. Now it is my turn. I reach the platform. I have to pass the commandant. I look the other way. I feel her staring at me as the doctor helps me onto the platform. Is that the one with the blood poisoning, doctor? She says, surprised. Yes, Madam Commandant. I took her out for the first time today. I feel the commandant's eyes piercing me. I avoid her gaze. Looking straight at the girls in front of me, I, too, recite in Yiddish. A message for Mama. Blue little clouds, floating so free, won't you please carry a message for me? If on your journey you should see, happen to see, my mother. My voice cracks. My personal message to Mama is the message of the 400 Nazi victims in this camp to two to 400 mothers crying for their children. My voice becomes stronger. Tired, weary, left all alone, torn from her children, filled with sorrow and pain, please gently touch her, please gently kiss her, bring her my love. Tell how I miss her, feel her pain, feel her sorrow. Please tell her, my friends, she must live for tomorrow. If you see her tears, please wipe them. Tell her, soon, soon they will come the day, when together again, together again we will be. A mother, her child, a family, all free. Mama, dear mama, please whisper for me. Today will vanish, believe. Soon your empty arms, your children will fill. The sorrow will turn to joy. Tomorrow is near. Dear Mama, please live. Be strong. We'll weather this storm. We'll find you, dear Mama. Please do not despair. We will live. We will live to be free. I feel my knees bending. I feel hands grabbing me. Someone is carrying me. I open my eyes slowly. I am back in the sick room. Besides me sits the doctor. Welcome back, Riva. You made me a bit nervous. You passed out. She caresses my head softly. I should have kept you here to begin with. You were still too weak and... She stops suddenly, her eyes in the doorway. I look up. Standing there in her brown Nazi uniform, club in hand, is the commandant. I lower my eyes. She has come to punish me for my poetry. She is going to send me away. I look at the doctor. She still holds her hands on my head, as if to protect me. Leave us, doctor, the commandant orders. The doctor remains standing by my side, her eyes angry and defiant. Leave us, please. The commandant's voice is softer now. The doctor moves slowly toward the door. My heart beats wildly as I watch her leave the room. I am all alone now. 
all alone with this beast who takes pleasure in punishing her helpless victims. Suddenly, she sits down on the edge of my bunk, her eyes setting my face intently. I lie still. She puts her hand in the pocket of her Nazi uniform and pulls out a small notebook. She tosses it into my blanket. I remain still. She does not take her eyes off my face as she puts her hand into her pocket. You do not have to hide your poetry, she says. I was sure that we killed all your emotions, but all you can feel is hunger. All you can think about. All you can think of is bread. She stops looking away. Your poems are full of hope, of love. You still feel. You still dream. You yearn for your mother. You remind me that I, too, have a mother. She stands up and leaves the room without looking at me. I pick up the notebook with shaking hands. This did not really happen. I must be dreaming. There is something human in that woman, something that can be moved by a poem. I touch the small notebook. It is real. I am not dreaming. It is real. It is real.